Okay, so in this video we want to um, begin to look at factorising quadratic trinomials. So that is a quadratic expression which has three terms. So an x squared term, an x term and a constant term. In this instance we're going to look at factorisation of monic trinomials. So that is where we have 1x squared. So there's nothing other than 1 here. It's not even negative x squared. Certainly not 2x squared. Okay. So we only have 1x squared. It's a monic trinomial. And this factorisation process is much simpler. Things become a lot more complicated the minute we've got something that is not a 1 in front of that um, x squared term. So um, factorisation of quadratic trinomials requires the use of the double distributive law. So we looked at expanding in the um, couple of videos ago and we now want to reverse that process by factorising. Now when we expand out, um, we're going to get a monic quadratic, 1x squared, if the brackets each just have a single x in them. So it won't, there won't be a 2x or a 3x, it'll just be x plus or minus a number in one bracket and x plus or minus a number in the other, in the other bracket. So um, knowing that the monic quadratic is going to factorise to something of this form um, is what makes this much simpler. There's a lot less going on here. We'll have a look at the non-monic or harder quadratic trinomials in the next video. So we know when we expand out x plus a times x plus b, we get x squared plus bx plus ax plus ab. And then these are like terms in the middle and we can factorise out that common factor of x and we get a plus b times x. So the key thing we're looking at is we know when we're trying to factorise, so we're trying to go from this back to the brackets, we know already because it's a monic trinomial that there'll be two brackets with x's at the start of each bracket. That's how we're going to get the x squared term. And then we know there's going to be two numbers in here. A and B. Okay, and what we need to recognize is that those two numbers that go in these brackets, A and B, they're going to add together to give the coefficient of x and they're multiplying together to give the constant term in the quadratic trinomial. So in order to factorize, we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give the constant term and that add or sum together to give the coefficient of x. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. Um, so people talk about something called the cross method. Cross method is really just a fancy way of formulating your trial and error. There really shouldn't be trial and error with quadratic trinomials. You shouldn't need to be doing anything more than writing down the answer. You should be able to nut out factors of that number at the end that are going to add up to that number in the end and straight away write down your answer. You really shouldn't need anything um, very complicated written down here at all. Okay, so let's have a look at each of these um, examples. So we're looking for, we know it's a monic trinomial, so when we factorise it, there'll be two brackets, each with an x at the beginning. All we're trying to do is identify these two numbers that go in here, and we know those two numbers will multiply to give negative 18 and add to give negative 3. Now if you struggle a bit with the factors, and this is where knowing your times tables really helps here, negative 18, you might think, oh, okay, well, but start to be, be systematic about how you um, come up with your factors. So 18 and always 1 times 18. That's the simplest pair. Then if I double 1 and halve 18, I get another pair of factors, 2 times 9. Okay. Um, or I might also have, and you might just work you out, does 1 go into 18? Yes. Does 2 go into 18? Yes. Does 3 go into 18? Yes. 3 times 6. Does 4 go into 18 a whole number of times? No. 5 doesn't. Um, six, we've already got six here, and so then we would start to work our way back. So those are the only three pairs of factors. And then it's negative 18, so one of them, one of those numbers has to be negative, and you need to work out which pair will mean, and how do you make, which number do you make negative in order to make sure that they add up to negative three. So you're going to need negative six and positive three. Those will multiply together to give you negative 18, and they will add together to give you negative three. And so therefore we've fully factorized. Okay. As I said, you might not need to write anything down. If the number's quite big, you might want to sort of be a bit systematic about how you try to break it up. There's no magic skill set for how do I find the factors. Those of you who know your times tables well will be able to do this more easily than those who don't. Those of you that don't, start to write out the factors. Does one go into it? Does two go into it? Does three go into it? Be systematic about it so you know you don't miss any. Okay, again, monic quadratic trinomial. So I know when I factorise, it's going to be x and x in the front of two brackets. We're looking for two numbers that are going to add to give positive, sorry, multiply to give positive 30 and add to give negative 11. So 30 is five times six. 
um, but 5 plus 6 is positive 11, so if we make it negative 5 and negative 6, negative 5 times negative 6 is positive 30, negative 5 plus negative 6 is negative 11. Great. Part C. This is a non-monic quadratic. We haven't talked about how to factorise those yet, we'll address that in the next video. However, it's not really a non-monic quadratic because there's a common factor. So you don't want to be using, we're going to introduce a much more complex process in the next video. If you do not need that process, you don't want to have to use that process. So again, first step is, are there common factors? Yes, take out the common factors and then we should have a simple quadratic in this instance. So 3 is a common factor. When we take it out, we get x squared minus x minus 12. Okay, we can't get rid of that 3. Okay, some people sort of just drop the 3 and, and you'll be more likely to do that later on when we get on to solving equations. But it's equivalent to you saying 18 is the same as 6. Oh, I just divided 18 by 3. Okay, but you can't lose the 3. You can write it as 3 times 6, but you can't just write it as 6. Same thing here. If you want to factor out 3, great, but you're still going to make sure that you actually have to continue to write it. Uh, otherwise, it's not equal to the previous line. That might seem obvious, but you'll be surprised how many of you will, you will make that mistake. Okay, factors of negative 12 that add up to negative 1. Okay, I've already identified I've got my monic quadratic, so I know it's just going to be x plus or minus a number times x plus or minus a number. Two numbers that multiply to give negative 12 and add to negative 1. It's going to be 3 and 4. I'm going to need to have negative 4 and positive 3 to make sure that they add to negative 1. And again, wouldn't matter whether you wrote those numbers in the brackets the other way around, because this is exactly the same as 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 4. It's the same thing. The order that you multiply in doesn't matter. Uh, okay, D. Now again, this is a non-monic quadratic. This negative here is a problem. Anything other than 1, positive 1 in front of the x squared, and it's all of a sudden not a monic quadratic. But again, like we did in the previous example, we can factor out that negative 1 so that what we do get left with is a monic quadratic. So again, we can't lose the negative just like we couldn't lose the 3 in the previous example. What's in that bracket is monic, so two brackets with x's at the beginning, and we're looking for factors of negative 20 that add up to positive 1. So that is going to be positive 5 and negative 4. Or well, you might have written negative 4 and positive 5, it doesn't matter. So fully factorised, negative x plus 5, x minus 4. Okay, then we want to look at simplifying some algebraic fractions by first fully factorising the numerator and denominator. Now, we did a bit of this back in Chapter 1 as well. Um, the, remembering the key thing when you're simplifying fractions is that you're looking for common factors in the numerator and denominator so that you can divide numerator and denominator by the common factor. That's what's happening when we're cancelling. Cancelling, you're dividing numerator and denominator by the same thing. The only way we're going to be able to identify whether there are common factors is to fully factorise. Then we can see the factors. It's a bit like thinking about if you've got 24 divided by 18. Okay, we don't. We can normally do that in our head, but what you're what you're really thinking about is common factors between those two things. Okay, well, six is a common factor. 24 is six times four, and 18 is six times three. So I can see that common factor is six. Dividing the top and the bottom by 6 leaves me with 4 thirds. We want to do that same thing algebraically. Fully factorise both the top and the bottom so we can identify whether there are any common factors that will cancel down. Okay, so it's really just factorisation practice. So the numerator is a monic quadratic. So we should be able to go straight to two brackets with x's at the beginning. Factors of 8 that add up to 6. That's going to be plus 2 and plus 4. The denominator is a difference of two squares, x squared minus two squared, so that's going to be x plus two, x minus two. And we see that x plus two is a common factor, dividing the numerator and denominator by x plus two, and we, so we just get left with x plus four over x minus two. Now remember, you cannot, sorry, you cannot just cancel with this four and the two. You cannot just cancel this x and this x, okay? Because canceling is dividing the numerator and denominator by the same thing. That's the same thing as you saying, oh, well, five sevenths, oh, that's the same as two plus three over two plus five. And so therefore I can cancel those twos and it's the same as three fifths. It's not the same at all. It's a completely different fraction you've just created because this is not canceling. You've subtracted two from the numerator and denominator and therefore you've created a completely different fraction. You need to be able to divide numerator and denominator by the same thing. So um, we don't want to, you know, 
add or subtract or, or just cancel with half of the numerator or denominator, we must, there's no more common factors. There's no common factors between x plus x and 4 on the numerator alone. So there can't be any common factors with the numerator and the denominator. Okay, part B, again, we want to fully factorise. So we're looking for, we've got a monic quadratic on the top. Okay, it's a not x, but it's still uh, 1a squared. Uh, and so we're looking for factors of negative 6 that add up to positive 1. So that will be negative 2 and positive 3 over, it's a common factor in the denominator there of 2, which leaves us with a plus 3. And so our bracket of a plus 3 cancels out. And so we have a minus 2 all over 2. Now again, I know it's tempting. Oh, there's twos. Let me just cancel them out and it just equals A. It doesn't just equal A. If you really wanted to, you could split it up and say, well, this is A over 2 minus 2 over 2 and write it as A over 2. Sorry, not 9 over 2. A over 2 uh, minus 1. Um, but this is completely unnecessary. You're done here. That fraction is in simplest form. Okay, part C. We've got a, a squared minus b squared, so that's a difference of two squares. And we've got a plus b all squared, which is already factorised. So we don't want to expand that. Okay, Remember that love of expanding all of a sudden starts to appear and we do a lot of expanding, but we don't want to because we've got a plus b all squared, which to remember is a plus b times a plus b. It's already factorised. Common factor of a plus b is identified, and so we've got a minus b over a plus b. Again, no more common factors. We can't factorise the numerator or the denominator further, and so therefore there can't be any more factors in common between them, and so we're done. Okay, part D. Again, we've got monic quadratics, so x and x on the top. Okay, fact, numerator, factors of 15 that add up to negative 8. So 15 is 3 times 5. They add to 8, but if we make it negative 3 and negative 5, they'll add to negative 8. Denominator, um, 35 is 7 times 5. Because um, it's negative 35, I'll we'll have to make one negative. Um, so if we make it plus 7 and minus 5, they will add to positive 2. And then we can see common factor of x minus 5. So we're dividing the top and the bottom of the fraction by x minus 5. And we get left with x minus 3 over x plus 7. Right, and then they might be a bit messier, but it's still the same process. Okay, Factorise everything so you can see your common factors and then go from there. So we're going to have uh, x plus 2, x plus 4 on the numerator, x plus 2, x minus 2. It's actually the same fraction we simplified back in part A here. Um, but then we've also got that maybe multiplied by x minus 3 over x minus 2. Uh, and so our x plus 2s cancel. And while we've got x minus 2s, there's not one on the numerator and one on the denominator. So they actually don't cancel any further. So this is going to be x plus 4 times x minus 3 all over x minus 2 all squared. There's absolutely no need to expand those out. As I said to you earlier, expanded is not more simplified than um, factorised. It's perfectly fine to leave them fully factorised. In fact, it makes it very clear that it certainly can't be simplified any further. All right, let's have a look at this last one here. Okay, so top um, left, so numerator of the first fraction, you've got a common factor of 2 there. Let's take that out first. So we've got 2 times x squared plus 4x, sorry, x squared plus 2x minus 3, taking out the 2. Denominator, we've got a common factor of 6. If we take that out, we get x squared minus 1. Now let's change it from division to multiplication and flip the um, numerator and denominator in the second fraction. I'm going to factorise at the same time. They're both monic or simple quadratics. So now the denominator has become the numerator. So we're looking at that here. Factors of negative 4 that add up to negative 3. It's x minus 4 and x plus 1. And then the numerator has gone on to the denominator. Factors of negative 12 that add up to negative 1. x minus 4, x plus 3. Okay, so x minus 4 is going to cancel there. Um, the left hand fraction, we haven't fully factorised that yet. So let's factorise now that bracket. So we're looking for factors of negative 3 that add up to positive 2. So that's going to be x plus 3, x minus 1. And on the denominator, we've got a difference of two squares. So x plus 1 times x minus 1. All right, so again, our x minus 1s are going to cancel there. And then we've still got, we've cancelled those x minus 4s in the second fraction. So we now just have x plus 1 over x plus 3. 
Alright, so um, again we should be able to, we can cancel before we put the fractions together. So now this x plus 3 at the top here is going to cancel with the x plus 3 down the bottom there. And this x plus 1 up the top here cancels with this x plus 1 down here. And we've just got 2 over 6 left. And 2 over 6 simplifies further because there's a common factor of 2. So it simplifies to 1 third. Okay, so exercise 5c, um, some factorisation of monic or simple quadratic trinomials and then also working with some algebraic fractions.